بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا کورس نیشنل اینڈ انٹرنیشنل افیئرس ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ود یو اے ٹاپک ڈیموکریسی ان دا میڈل ایسٹ اینڈ آلسو این عرب اسپرنگ دیر از اے کوشچن ان دا مائنڈ آف پیپل آر ان مائی مائنڈ دیٹ وائی ڈز دا میڈل ایسٹ لیگ بہائنڈ the global trend of uh, democratizations so this has been the central question that scholars and policy analysts working on the middle east have had to tackle for decades the so called third wave of democratization that began in the 1970s doubled the number of democracies in the world by the 1990s it spread all around latin america east and southeast asia as well as southern eastern and central europe however the middle east was left out of this trend later because authoritarian or authoritarianism has persisted in the region scholars have spilled considerable ink on the question of why the middle east has remained a stubbornly resistance to democracy despite the lack of satisfactory explanations a huge body of scholarship has developed Since 2011, the Arab world has experienced various changes. Like in 2010, the young fruit vendor, his name was Muhammad Bawzizi, he uh, 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 set himself on fire to protest police harassment in the town of Tunisia. As the fire of protest swept through the Middle East, and north africa some of the authoritarian regimes in countries such as tunisia egypt libya and yemen were ousted the uprising generated some forms of repressions and uh, and civil war in syria and bahrain they also led to limited reforms in saudi arabia kuwait qatar the UAE and Jordan it is uh, still too early to predict whether or not these transitions will lead to democratizations in the region but it is a critical time to understand the impact of 2011 uprising on the democracies of the middle eastern states so what does it mean by an arab spring The Arab Spring was uh, a loosely related group of protests that ultimately resulted in regime changes in countries such as Tunisia, Libya and Egypt. Not all of the movement however could be deemed successful at least if the end goal was increased democracy and cultural freedom. in fact for for many countries and developed by the revolts of the arab spring the period since has been a hallmarked by increased st- instability and oppression given the significant impact of the arab spring through the northern africa and the middle east it's easy to forget the a series of large scale political and social movements argu- arguably uh, began w- with a single act of deficiency there will be a question in your minds that why they they gave the name arab spring the name arab spring is is a reference to the revolutions of 18 Uh, 18, 18, uh, 1848 also known as the people's spring when political upheavals swept in europe 
Ever since, a spring has been used to describe movements toward democracy, like Paraguay Spring. The Western media began uh, popularizing the term Arab Spring in 2011, while the uprising in Tunisia led to some, some improvements in the country from, from a human rights perspective. Not all of the nations that witnessed such social and political upheaval in the spring of 2011 changed for the better. Most notably is, is in, in, in Egypt, where early changes arising from the Arab Spring gave many hope after the ouster of the President Hosni Mubarak. Authoritarian rule has apparently returned following the controversial election of Mohammed Mursi in 2012. A coup led by defense minister, his name was Abdul Fatah al Sisi. He installed the latter as the president in 2013 and he remains in power today. In, in Libya, meanwhile, the authoritarian dictator, the colonel Muammar Gaddafi, was overthrown in October 2011 during a violent civil war, and he was tortured, literally dragged through the streets and executed by opposition fighters. The video foot footages of his death was seen by millions millions of, of people online. Since Qazafi's downfall, Libya has remained in a state of civil war, and two opposing governments effectively rule separate re regions of the country. Libya's civil population has suffered significantly during the years of political upheaval, with violence in the streets and access to food, resources, and, uh, and health care services severely limited. This has contributed uh, in part to the, to the ongoing worldwide refuge, uh, refugee crisis, which has, been, which has seen thousands flee from, from Libya, most often by, by, by boats across the Mediterranean Sea with hopes of new opportunities in Europe. The next point is, uh, our, let's, I'm going to discuss with you the mm, regime of Bashar al-Assad. Similarly, the civil war in Syria that began in the, in the aftermath of the Arab Spring lasted for several years forcing uh, many people to leave the country to seek refuge in, in Turkey, in Greece, and throughout Western Europe. For a time, the militant group, such as the ISIS, had declared a Khilafat, a nation governed by Islamic law in, in, north, in northeastern Syria. The group executed thousands of people and many others fled the region in the fear of their lives. Yet, uh, although ISIS uh, has largely been uh, defeated in Syria, the oppressive regime of, of long-term dictator Bashar al-Assad remains in power in the country. The ongoing civil war in Yemen can also be traced to the, to the Arab Spring. The country's infrastructure has suffered significant damages, and the conflict has de devolved into tribal warfare. Tribal warfare and in Bahrain, peaceful pro-democracy -dem protest in the capital, Manama, in 2011 and 2012 were violently suppressed by the government of King uh, Hamad bin, bin Isa al-Khalifa. Officially, the country has a constitutional monarchy, monarchy form of government, but 
personal freedoms remain limited next uh, i am going to discuss with you the key events in the arab spring different events were happened in two, in 2010 and onwards but let me discuss with you the most important events that happened like in 2010 uh, muhammad uh, bawzizi set himself a fire outside a local government office and an act of protest after being arrested by police for for not having a permit to run a vegetable stall a street protests began soon after his after his death throughout the country likewise in 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 january 2011 the tunisian president zainul abidin ben ali resigns and flees to to saudi arabia in in the same year the first coordinated mass protests are held in in tahrir square in in cairo in egypt also in 2011 protesters and in, in several uh, pre um, pre of uh, predominantly muslim countries the days it's called the days of of rake to oppose authoritarian governments and push for democratic reforms like egypt's hasni mubarak steps down in 2011 pro democracy protest begin in syria police beat uh, thousands of pro democracy protesters in morocco like in 2011 uh, the moroccan protesters approve ap- ap- constitutional changes that that limit the power of the country's monarchy the rebels in libya they launch battle they launch battle to take control of of tripoli yemen's hold a million man um, a million man march a large scale pro democracy protest libyan dictator colonel mamar kasafi is captured by rebels tortured and killed these were some of the important events that happened in in an arab spring next i'm going to discuss with you the emergence of of four wars when when millions of disconnected citizens first looked to the streets in tunisia egypt syria libya and yemen is in in rapid successions between december 2010 and and april 2011 protests were were somewhat new in their expectations and certainly ill prepared they didn't have a plan of actions beyond mobilizing large numbers of people they they didn't have well articulated manifestos are even lists of demands beyond generic uh, mantras like freedom dignity and the dictator must go these were their demands not only were they they not organized for a long term struggle to change the regime many rejected on an principle even the idea of creating formal organizations like political parties believing the hierarchies were were anti democratic and leadership should remain diffuse on the other side of the divide the governments remained supremely confident that they didn't have to make serious concessions to remain in control if some in the ranks of the elite believed reform was necessary they didn't have have much influence the military took direct control in egypt forcing the the military they forces president husni mubarak to step aside the leaders of libya syria and yemen fought to stay in power and their stubbornness eventually tracked the civil wars 
the Gulf Arab monarchy simply distributed billions to their citizens and to all possible organizations without giving serious thought to the possibility of political reform. Only the king of Morocco, he proved more uh, settled at the first sign of protests, he quickly engineered constitutional reform. And the, the, first, the fact to left his power and neck, but gave opposition parties a greater role in governance. Tunisia emerged as the only country where an uprising led to real political change in part more by, by accident than by, by design. President Zainul Abidin bin Ali left to take his family to Saudi Arabia for safety, intending to return immediately to set things straight. But he was prevented from, from, from going back. The resulting power vacuum led to an open in that process of change that birthed a multi-party democracy. Although protesters soon lost control over upfolding events, the uprising had real consequences, some affecting the entire region and others specific countries. First, all Arab governments are now taking the complaints and demands of their citizens more seriously. They have learned through direct experiences or by observing uprising in neighboring countries that they can no longer count on their citizens to remain silent like as in the past. Just before the uprising in Egypt, uh, we were assured by a high-ranking uh, political official that President Hosni Mubarak would have to trouble transferring power to his son because Egyptians were, were docile people. No Arab official would make such a statement today uh, not out of political correctness but because rulers have learned the hard way that even usually passive citizens can rise up. Governments have, have developed a new fear of their citizens, which unfortunately tends to transform into, into uh, repressions rather than, rather than recognition of political rights. Citizens, for their part, they, they haven't lost all fear of government, but they have gained a new sense of, of the power of the street and a new willingness to challenge governments. Let me discuss with you the, the conclusion. As you all know that street protests have become a normal part of political life in Pakistan and the rest of the world. It's also happening in the Arab world today, just as they are elsewhere. It is worthwhile pointing out that one of the most uh, enduring legacies of the French revolutions the French revolutions happened in, in 1789 uh, is the propensity of French citizens to take to the streets whenever they disagree with the government of today. Most changes that have occurred since 2011 are specific to, to particular countries or regions. It is easier to understand what is happening by, by accepting that there is no single Arab world, but four worlds which each affected by the uprising in different and distant ways. A space will only allow us to point briefly to some of the most notable outcomes 
to give to readers or listeners a sense of how different the consequences have been. I think that's enough for today. Thanks for watching my video. Kindly subscribe subscribe my channel so that um, because I will upload n next lectures and upcoming futures so that you can get it easily. Thank you once again and best of luck.